found himself in dire need. That's actually a quote from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verse 14. And we're going to hear that on the fourth Sunday of Lent because it comes right out of the prodigal son story. He found himself in dire need. Isn't it interesting how many people wait until they're in dire need before they approach the Father, before they approach God and ask for help? Now, I have to admit, when I was thinking about this and I reflected upon my life, to me, like the worst time in my life, like dire need was when there was no milk in the refrigerator when I made my coffee. You know, like that's, for, for many of us, that's what it's like. But here, as we join together as believers, there are also, I believe today, so many who are in a spiritual dire need. And so we're picking this particular theme for our Lenten series because so many of us are actually in that dire need. That dire need for the grace, that dire need for the presence of Christ in our lives. That dire need that says, I need Christ to build me up. Jesus goes out into the desert. Forty days, it says, he wasn't eating. He also was in dire need. Now look at the difference between the young man who goes off and Jesus Christ who goes off. They're both hungry. They both are having trouble finding food. They're both in that same kind of physical condition. And yet the prodigal son is in his head thinking, I'm going to go back and beg for my father's forgiveness. I'm going to just go back because I need food. I really need to be cared for. I need the comfort of a bed again. And Jesus is at the other extreme. Yes, I am hungry, but food won't do it. Power won't do it. Money won't do it. I want to serve the Lord. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, I find it very interesting because of the scripture passages that we pay attention to the least nowadays are the ones that make reference to this tempter, the devil. In the first letter of St. Peter, we priests every Tuesday night when we read our night prayer, the scripture is, beware of the devil who prowls prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to destroy. The devil who is out there looking to destroy souls, looking to take them down, looking to do whatever he can to trip us up. And he tried to do it to Jesus today. So even the Son of God wasn't exempt from the temptations of the devil. It makes me feel so much better when I am tempted and when the devil is trying because I'm like, well, even Jesus wasn't spared. And the line that gets me is he left him for a time. He didn't just give up and say, you know what, I'll go looking for someone else. I'm not going to get this one. He's the son of God. He left him for a time. The devil never gives up. He is relentless in his attempt to destroy souls. He is relentless in his desire to take down the believers of Christ. He is relentless and he will do whatever he can Trust me, I'm sure the devil knows my own weaknesses better than I know them myself. He knows my Achilles heel. He knows what to tempt me with. He knows to throw what, what to throw in my path. And that's why I always remind myself that I have a responsibility, not only as a priest, but as a believer. And it's the same responsibility that you have. Be prepared for his attempt. Be prepared. Be men and women of the Word. Be men and women who are filled with the Word of God, filled with Scripture, so that when the devil throws it at you, because he even threw a Scripture quote at Jesus, and Jesus answered with another Scripture quote. Be prepared by having the Word of God on your lips, having that Word of God, as St. Paul tells us, ready to go. Be men and women of the Word. If we don't spend time with sacred Scripture, if we don't study the Scriptures, if we don't pray over the Scriptures, if we don't consume the Scriptures, as St. Jerome tells us, 
Those who are ignorant of the scriptures are ignorant of Christ. And I don't want to be ignorant of Christ. I need him in those times when the temptations come. No, none of us are exempt, not even the Son of God, not cardinals, not popes, not bishops, not priests, not believers. The devil wants to trip us up. I don't know why, but about three weeks ago, one of the books that I picked up to start reading again was C.S. Lewis, The Screwtape Letters. I don't know how many of you are familiar with C.S. Lewis's work. It's a phenomenal work. It was one of these ones that he was piecing together and he wrote in sections And the whole thing is the premise that the devil is writing letters to one of his minions. His his name is Screwtape. He's, uh, He's writing letters to one of his minions named Wormwood, and he's instructing him how to go after this one believer. See, this minion was given this one believer, and he says, you've got to get him. And so he's giving him the different techniques and the different ways and warning him how to do this and giving... And you know what? As I'm reading it, I'm going... That's exactly the technique that he's used on me. C.S. Lewis hit the nail right on the head. He's not overt. He doesn't get in your face, but he looks for those weaknesses. He looks for those times when you are kind of open and, and vulnerable. And then he tries to use that as a way. If you're looking for a good Lenten read, the screw tape letter, C.S. Lewis, written in short, I think about 30 different sections, would be good for just about every day of Lent to read another one. So on Ash Wednesday, I came out and I asked everyone to make a plan, to make a spiritual plan. When we enter into Lent, this is a great time. This is a powerfully spiritual time to feed feed our souls, to build ourselves up, to prepare ourselves for the battle in this world, to be ready when the trial comes so that you and me, dear brothers and sisters, we can go forth armed with the Word of God, armed with the sacraments, armed with all of these powerful tools that we're going to be talking about throughout Lent, the tools of adoration and reconciliation, the tools of patience and kindness, the tools of love and forgiveness, the tools that we all need so that we can go forth and be strong in our conviction and let everybody know, yes, the devil is prowling, but you don't have to fear because Jesus Christ will deliver you. He will strengthen you, but you have to do your part. And that's why I say you need a plan. So did you make a plan for Lent? Did you actually have specific things on Ash Wednesday? Things that you were going to sacrifice and give up? Extra prayers that you were gonna say? Extra prayer times that you were gonna say them? Did you make specific things? Because without specific plans, the devil's got an open. Have a specific plan. We're offering so many opportunities to assist you in all of this. We offer you opportunities here. Starting tomorrow night, we're going to have our retreat every Monday night at 7 o'clock in the OLPH room, our Live Christ, Share Christ. I'm presenting tomorrow night, so I'm going to see all of you there tomorrow night, right? Yeah, I get a couple of chuckles. Yeah, sure, Father, it's a Monday night. No, seriously, do things like that. On Tuesday nights, we have our Bible study. Take advantage of learning the Bible. For Lent, they're covering the Bible and the sacraments. What better way to learn? We have Bible study in French. We have charismatic prayer in French and Spanish. We have meditations every Thursday night with Father Benedict. Take advantage of these tools that are offered to you. Come to adoration on Tuesdays. Come on First Fridays. Come to the Stations of the Cross. These are opportunities for you to immerse yourself in the Word because all of these come right from Scripture. To become men and women of the Word of God so that you can stand strong, you can stand confident, you can be that person Jesus called you to be, that person that no matter how hungry you are, the devil can't get you to eat that food that no matter how thirsty you are, he can't get you to drink that drink, that no matter how weak you feel, he can't tempt you with ultimate power, that no matter how much you doubt God, that that no matter how much you believe in God, he can't get you to doubt him. Because that's what he tried on Jesus, and it didn't work. But I know he's tried it on me, and at times it has worked. What is your plan? If you're faltering, that's okay. Pick up now. 
Get it going now. Make that plan to say every Monday night I'm going to live Christ, share Christ. Every Tuesday night I'll be part of a Bible study. I'll go to the French Bible study. I'll go to the prayer. I will just do this to at least break the, ro- the, the routine in my life, to break that cycle that has left me vulnerable, to break that cycle that has left me as a tool to the devil. Yes, he wants to tempt us. Yes, he wants to trip us up. But he will not be successful for anybody who is strong in Christ, for anybody who takes the season of Lent and all throughout the year takes seriously their faith by living it, immersing in it, and doing all that you can on your part to be prepared. He found himself in dire need. Maybe I'm not in dire need physically. Maybe I'm not in dire need with hunger or other things. But spiritually, we're in need. And sometimes it is dire. Sometimes it is difficult. Don't go it alone. Jesus has given you a community to pray with. Pray with your community. Be with your brothers and sisters so that when you find yourself alone, you'll realize that there are those who walk the journey with you. There are those who will stand strong with you. There are those who are going to be difference makers. He found himself in dire need. There are times I find myself in dire need, but the difference is when I get to that point of need, I know where I can be satisfied, and it isn't going to be with the temptations that the devil throws at me. It's going to be in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen.